Welcome back to the Weigh In Podcast. It's been a while, taking a little summer break, We're having some big Euro fever. We're back and we've got our friend Chris Billum Smith here. What's happening, Chris? You good? Yeah, all good. Thanks, mate. Yourself? Yes, I'm not too bad. Not too bad. Also, like I say, had a bit of Euro fever and sort of yeah. a, little down, a little down a week following a penny shootout heartbreak, but we're back. <laughs> so uh, a big a big thanks for jumping on the scales for the second time. Uh, yeah, a big shout out to, Yeah, a big shout out to our man, Steve Rocky Roach as well. What's happening, Steve? Yeah, good, good. Um, like you said, I was probably a bit bummed out from the Euros, but you know, ready to get back into what these boxing streets have to offer. We've got fight camp coming up, and no better man to talk to that about than Chris Bill and Smith. How you doing, man? Yeah, all good. Thank you, mate. Good cool. stuff. Well, let's go. Let's go straight into it. You know, we've got a big fight at the end of the month, July thirty first at Matchroom HQ and Fight Camp. How's it going? Yeah, uh, it's been a, a brilliant camp. Obviously, one a fight I've known about for a, a long time, sort of. Didn't have any time off after my last fight, like actual, like didn't have a week. I used to usually have like a week off or something, but I just got straight back to like running and just ticking over a bit the, the week after, then straight back into camp. So, um, yeah, absolutely flying and looking forward to two weeks' time. And there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a few belts at stake. I know, Steve, you've been licking the lips at this fight. Yeah, awesome, awesome stuff. So, like, we've got the European title on, on the line. Um, and Tommy McCarthy is a is a fighter well known to uh, to the British public. How does that change your attitude towards the fight? Do you prefer having that sort of you know that that name to go for? You've obviously got previous with Tommy McCarthy. You've obviously seen a few of his fights. I'd imagine he had a good amateur career as well, so you're very familiar with uh, with Tommy. I'd imagine. Um, how does that change your preparation, or does that make it easier for you in camp um, training? Yeah, I think um, it's nice to have like bit between the teeth you know the last fight I got quite late notice with the opponent um had the disappointment of in November of uh Dion Juma getting injured obviously for the British title fight and then we were hoping that was going to be the fight in March but then that that didn't happen so it obviously got a quite late notice for the from the opponent um but definitely having a domestic fight three belts on the line obviously my Commonwealth Tommy's European and the vacant British as well so um, there couldn't really be much more if, if you're not motivated for a fight like this. There's not really much you can get motivated for. So, uh, yeah, no, it's a, a really, really exciting fight and one I'm buzzing about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. And it's a fight that we're looking forward to as well. Um, has there been any back and forth on, on the DMs between yourself and Tommy? No, I mean, obviously, uh, his last fight week, there was a few interviews that everyone seemed to be mentioning me to him. Um because I, 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 that's the fight, I, the fight I wanted. This is the fight I wanted. Um, and he was saying that he basically didn't want that fight. It was a backward step and this, that and the other. And then so, um, but so I sent a tweet out, obviously, and, and, and said that I'd I'd punch holes in him uh, to get his attention, <laughs> which is unlike me, you know, but I needed to do something. Um, so I, I did what I had to do. And thankfully it worked. It was a uh, I'm probably use it again in future. That that tactic <laughs> it worked really well to to get him in the ring and, and sign the contract. So, uh, and then since then he's done all the talking. Um, so it's it's all good. Uh, it's uh, I've, my job's done, and I can just focus on getting ready for the fight. I love that. I, I wonder what the you know the budgets are at Sky Sports for social media marketing. You know BBC <laughs> social media. All you need to do is tweet out. I'll punch holes in you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta, love, you gotta love boxing, then yeah. <laughs> it's a strange sport. Market itself, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I guess that that's the power of social media as well, isn't it? Absolutely. What would you, what would you say are the um, are the, the strengths of Tommy McCarthy? What kind of fight are you expecting it expecting it to be? What can the fans look out for uh, when you two step in the ring? Um, I think he's he's a good boxer. I think he's got speed. He's obviously got a good boxing sort of IQ and, and a very good amateur background, which is probably where the his skills come from. Uh, he's got quite good feet. He moves his feet quite well. Um, and I think it's a, a really entertaining fight. I watched his last two fights uh, recently. Um, the last one, the uh, guy didn't really offer too much, but the fight he won the European title in, he was, you know, he, he did did well. The guy was coming forward the whole time and and um and he was, you know, throwing keeping him busy throughout the fight. He tied towards the end of the fight, um the Lao Lagoon. And so Tommy sort of took over a bit more. But um yeah, he, he you know, he was he was there there throughout and he was 
active throughout. So he's obviously got a decent decent engine as well. But um, yeah, I think it, I think the fight itself it is going to be really entertaining, and I've just been I've been looking forward to it the the whole camp and I'm sort of smiling the whole camp and. Uh, <laughs> So I've just, uh, yeah, it's, you know, these are the fights that fans want. These are the fights that you want as a fighter when you're dreaming of fighting for titles, you know, domestic fights for, for prestigious belts. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a, a good night. Yeah, it should be, it should be a good night. And I, I know it's also going to be at fire camp as well. Would that be a new experience for you? I can't remember if you fought in fight camp last time. No, I boxed, uh, on the second week last time against Nathan Thorley, uh, defending my Commonwealth title. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's I've been there and, and experienced it already. This time, though, there's going to be a couple of hundred fans. Um, we've got quite a few, got a few people coming up from Bournemouth, friends and family, and and then some other Bournemouth lads messaged um, my missus the other day and said that there's, I think she says that he said there was like ten or twelve of them coming up. So there should be some noise for me there as well. So yeah, so I'm really, really looking forward to it. Yeah, what does it, what does it mean to have fans back in the um, in the in the kind of enclosure, I don't know what you call fight camp, Eddie Hearn's back garden in, in, a, in the arena. Um, what does it mean to have uh, fans back there supporting you on? And how does that change your kind of, how you think you'll feel in the ring? Yeah, I mean, I watched the um, the Grand Prix this weekend. Obviously, there's a new setup to it. I don't know if you, you guys follow Grand Prix, but there's like qualifying on a Friday now for a Saturday sprint race. Well, this weekend, they're trialling an event. And yeah. then I was watching it um Yes, then Lewis Hamilton after he got he got what would be first position for the the sprint race basically. Um, yeah, it's kind of like pole, but it's it's not officially pole. But um, and he just like jumped on the barrier after, and there's like a whole all the fans are there because it's a pilot event, and he's just like <laughs> absolutely loving it, and that just gave me goosebumps thinking there's going to be fans back at the fight. Um, and I've seen it with yeah. the football as well, so just having fans is is absolutely you know it's why it's it's what the sport's about sport is about the fans at the end of the day it's not about any sport that is any anything you know it's entertainment business and, and people want to be entertained um so yeah it, it's uh i'm i'm buzzing to have you know spectators back at, at the at the fight 100 percent. it must feel like a bit of a blessing in disguise to feel like maybe that the dion juma fight got a bit ca- got cancelled and now, like, you know, because that was a fight that was worthy of having fans. And this is definitely a fight that's worthy of having fans. So, the, you know, the, the wait was annoying, but it's definitely going to be worth it when you've got those fans there for the European crown. It's a, you know, it's quite a moment in your career. And you want to have the fans there, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I've, um, you know, it's, you, that's like I said before, like the fans are everything to do with, with sport. I mean, it's the reason I got into the sport was watching my mate box and everyone chanting his name. So, um, <laughs> It, I was like, that must be an unbelievable feeling. That atmosphere yeah. is all there for you. So, you know, for me, it's uh, it'll really, you know, top off the night. 100%. Definitely. And I guess you, know, you mentioned a few sporting events. We've got a mega event taking place uh, in a couple of weeks' time in shape of the Olympic Games as well. You looking forward to the Olympics? Yeah, I love the Olympics. Um, I remember years and years ago, I was obviously trying to get on the GB squad and stuff. And I was like, they, um, but even I've always, always loved the Olympics. I love all sports, so I I've, I've follow them. Uh, follow a lot of different events. But obviously, the boxing team have done superb. I think everyone, every weight qualified apart from one. Um, so the GB squad have got a really, really strong team, um, and there's uh, there's some real talent in that squad. And it's uh, some I always watch it, the the boxing at the Olympics. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. It's not just boxing you do, though, is it, Chris? Last time you came on, you told us what trampolining, fencing. So what, uh, yeah, um... that was. There were the sports <laughs> I, I tried out as a, as a kid. Um, not not so much anymore, unfortunately. Uh... Andy was actually telling me just before we came on air that he actually went trampolining last week for his birthday. He said it was quite a workout. He said he uh, mate, burnt a few calories. So yeah, I burnt a few calories, man. I had the uh, the Apple Watch there, mate. I was in the yeah. red zone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's um. No, it's uh, there's yeah all sports like like I said I uh, obviously got my my podcast as well which is about you know all different athletes from all different sports um, so yeah it's uh, I, I love the Olympics it's, it's the greatest sporting event in the world uh, it's a shame obviously that no one can go and spectate um, but yeah it's uh, it's still going to be a, a great great uh, spectacle hundred percent we actually you actually have a, a former opponent of yours Chevron Clark who. Um... Will will be going to represent the ninety one kilos category, um, and you guys had a had a tremendously close fight 
Um, can you tell us what you remember about fighting um, Chevon and what we can expect from him at the Olympics? Yeah, he, he's um, he's probably a bit short for 91, but he, he makes up for it in, in his tenacity. Mm. He comes forward all the time, throwing lots of shots. Um, I haven't seen him box in a couple of years now, um, obviously with everything going on, and I, I missed this fight in the qualifier. Um, but yeah, the the uh, he's he, he comes forward, he throws lots of shots. He's, um, you know, very sort of strong. He's a strong lad, very thick set. Um, so yeah, he's uh, that's that's the uh, that's what he'll bring, and it will give 110 percent every time. We had a, a close fight in the in the ABA final, but um, yeah, it's uh, it was. Uh, I, I wish him all the best. I, I messaged him the other day on Instagram, wishing him all the best. I hope he goes and gets gets a gold medal. That'd be brilliant. I'm so great. Yeah, like you said, he definitely has a, a real fan favorite style to to watch. So as an amateur, that's always because some of those matches can turn into kind of fencing matches. But Siobhan definitely has a has a exciting style to look out for. Yeah, definitely. There's another Olympian that Andy wanted to ask about. Yeah, but I'm really excited about Caroline Dubois. I know I know you've got Caroline and a brother um, Daniel in in your in your camp as well. So um, any any tips on on Caroline? No, like I've uh, obviously I've seen her. I've only seen her on the on the pads with Shane when when she came in with Daniel a couple of times. I think she had a few weeks off GB. So she came in on the pads, but yeah, really nice girl. Um, and obviously her her record speaks for itself. I think she's she's lost like you know two fights in her you know in her, in her whole senior career. So she's such a talent uh, as is as is Daniel. So she she's got it in her blood. Uh, in her and I know how hard she works and the, the you know the process and the way she lives her life. So it's um I'm I'm really root looking forward to Caroline going out there and doing the business and. Um, yeah, I'll be, be watching Caroline closely, obviously, with her, with her brother in the, in the gym. So, yeah, she's uh, definitely going to be one to watch uh, in the Olympics. And then win gold and then turn in pro, I think she'll, she'll clean up. You know, she'll win m multiple world titles because she's a real talent. Wow, that's big, big praise. But she is a very, very talented um, a talented athlete. Um, speaking of the Dubois family that you've got, um, Daniel joined, recently joined your Honestly, on the best stables, uh, the McGuigan hey, stable is just constantly hey, growing. Every time we, like, we spoke last time about it, um, what's Daniel Dubois? Um, has he been getting on in the gym, and what's what's he been like uh, as an addition to to the gym? Yeah, I mean, he was in only three weeks, I think, before his last fight, three or four weeks. Mm. Um, so, you know, he, he already had his like his running and his strength conditioning plan for that camp. So he was just doing pads with Shane. So sort of in and out of the gym, didn't get to catch up with him as much. But uh, since that fight, he's been straight back in the gym. I think he had a couple of days off and was straight back in the gym at the end of the following week. So um, yeah, he's a, uh, now he's, he, everyone knows what his, his strengths are. Um, but Shane's really starting to speed him up and it's, it's scary watching him on the pads. Obviously I've done a few rounds of him. Um, <laughs> big, big like, hitter, isn't he? Yeah, well, I've done a few rounds with him in the past, like before he joined the gym and then just before the last fight, I did a few rounds with him as well. Um, yeah. And then I've seen him improving on the pads of Shane. I'm like, I don't want to do any more rounds with him. <laughs> I was, was going to say, that's all you need. You've got, you got Lawrence and Coley and then you've got to switch it out with da Daniel Dubois. It's not, it's, yeah, it's not easy sparring in, in our gym. It's not easy sparring. So it's, uh, it's great for me to have, you know, such talent and big lads in the gym. It brings me on, brings me on loads. But now there are, uh, Dan's, Dan and Shane are really starting to gel now and you can really see it in Dan's work um, on the pads. And like, I think his speed is something what Shane will get out of him. He seems to, you know, speed everyone up that, that comes to him because yeah. he's that sort of, it gets you to punch correctly all the time. There's never any little taps on the, just throwing the punches for argument's sake, you know, for, for throwing it's sake. But he, so he's really sharpening Dan up and Dan's moving his feet really well. Um, and it's yeah, it's scary because he's only 23 and he's got so much learning to do, and he's picking it up really quick. So uh, I think Daniel Debar in, in in a year or two's time is going to be a scary phenomenon. Yeah, it's it's, it's, you, it's, it's, you kind of forget how young he is, isn't he? Yeah, that's it. He's he's, he's obviously had a massive fight with, with Joe Joyce um, a couple of fights mm -hmm. ago, and you forget how how young he is because he turned pro very early, especially for a heavyweight. Um, so yeah, yeah he's, uh, but he's an absolute phenomenal athlete and uh, a nice kid as well. I mean, I said like you're you're someone who you know looks at the performance side of of um, the mental side of performance. Sorry, 
And Daniel Dubois just seems like such a one track minded guy in terms of his training. Like you said, he's back in the gym after, like, you know, straight away after his, his fight. And he just seems like he's just a finely tuned athlete. So that having that in the gym will also, I'd imagine, be, you know, a great benefit to, to everyone. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he's got he's got one one goal, one purpose, and that's that's to, to become the best heavyweight in the world. And uh, it, it's it's really admirable because he's just always looking to learn. He comes in and he's he's warming up. You know, he's always early to the gym. He's got real, you know, all the traits and all the you know the the mentality there to become exactly what 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 he wants to become. So uh, yeah, it's a real exciting journey that British boxing fans should get um, really excited about. Yeah. And that, that leads me to my next question. I'm going to ask you in terms of the whole British boxing scene, who's been the stand up performer for you this year? But obviously, with it's, it's been a bit of a strange one. There hasn't been a huge amount of yeah. fights. Uh, you you can't knock Lawrence's world title win. I think what he did to Glowacki was no one's ever done that to him. Um, I know he's in the gym, so I might seem biased, but that was a uh, like. No one's ever won a world title so easy. And it wasn't like a one punch. It was so technical. He completely dissected him and then finished him with an unbelievable shot. And he, he didn't even get hit and he couldn't believe it. I think it's a shame that it lacked atmosphere in the sense of like having a full crowd there. He had a few friends there and obviously we were there. Um, but it was almost underwhelming because it was so easy and there was no fans to properly celebrate. Do you know what I mean? There was no roar. There's not... That, that proper atmosphere. Um, but yeah, it was a, a great, great performance. And I think people haven't really given him enough credit for it in the sense they when they talk about Lawrence, they just talk about, yeah, he won that obviously won his world title, but but they don't like look at the progression he's made. Um I think since since he's moved to Shane, he's you know, so the belief's always been there, but he's just fine-tuning everything and I think he's the best cruiserweight in the world, to be honest, right now. Um, he's he's so difficult to figure out. Um, I'm still trying two years later, <laughs> uh, two, three, two, two and a half years later. So, uh, no, it's uh, it's great to have him in the gym. And obviously, being a cruiserweight myself and having a cruiserweight world champion in the gym is is so valuable to me. Uh, so, Lawrence would be one of them. But there's a few, you know, Dalton Smith is, I've seen him, uh, obviously, he's had a fight, a fight camp. He boxed as well. Uh, was that last year or beginning of this year? And then uh, he, had, he was in the gym, sparring Luke Campbell for the Ryan Garcia fight as well. And he's a, a real talent coming through. I think, um, you know, he's he's one of those lads. He's young and he, he's got so much ability. It's going to be hard to hold him back, but he has got to be matched correctly at the same time and, and, and the right fights. And he'll be on the world stage, you know, pretty soon. And you still, Steve, who's been a sort of British standout for you this year? It's been a very weird year. It's funny because you mentioned a few fighters, and I'm like, is that this year? That's, yeah, that's, that's the thing. I haven't really. It's crazy year. And it's kind of blurring into one read. I can't remember. I can't remember what yeah. what fights have happened this year, which fights have happened, um, you know, last year during the during the pandemic. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I think when I think of performances. Um, Worldwide, Canelo really stood out for me. Just like the way that that you know, it, when I watched Canelo against Billy Joe Saunders, it was an unlucky performance for you know Billy Joe Saunders. When I watched him, it really did just look like that was a fighter in their absolute prime, like a real, like you're witnessing a special fighter in the peak of his career. Like, and there's not much you can really do with that. That was that really stood out for me when I watched Canelo. But yeah, there's there's lots of good fights. There's lots of, lots of good fights to be made. Um, what do you think of the new? Eddie Hearn's new uh, zone deal. He's talked about the new, this content that he's talked so much about, this new marketing and his new in-house thing. And some of the videos that I've seen coming out uh, promoting Fight Camp, I don't know if you've seen them, they look sensational. How, what do you think of all that, Chris? And what's it like to be part of this new kind of exciting um, movement to the zone? Yeah, obviously, Eddie built a great relationship with Sky and a lot of names got built on Sky and Sky is such a good platform. But I think everything's changing uh, across the world. You look at all the YouTubers and everything. Yeah. You know, you've got like the Netflix. And that's what I explain to people. The zone's like the Netflix for sport now. It's going to be, <laughs> they're going to get more and more sport involved. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're going to do more deals and get more sports on board. But I think boxing's the, the first one and uh, they're, they're going to pump lots of money into it. And, and the content itself, I think, is going to be brilliant. And I think yeah. you're going to get a lot less diluted stuff from 
where you like with Sky, there's so many shows going on in the sense of like a lot of fighters and and stuff like that, but and also a lot of sports. So you might get like a quick snippet on Sky Sports News. Whereas with the zone at the moment, if you people need to once they start getting on board with it, I think for a boxing fan it is absolutely brilliant. But obviously the the worry is that only boxing fans will subscribe. Um, but yeah, I think it will just take time to get the exposure out there for the for the fighters and 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 for the zone itself and and the boxing side and match room with that. But you know, Eddie's doing a great job. He's the best at what he does um, in in the world, and he's he's made this decision um and he wouldn't have done it just for a, a quick buck he would have done it because he's he's very much about legacy and mm. building and being better i mean it's the same with fight camp look what he's done with fight camp last year and how much of a success it was that's why it's back and i think fight camp will carry on even through the summers i think it will be a good thing to keep every year doing in the garden if they can and having you know that outdoor event and making it a, maybe a little bit more exclusive event, small people, um, and that's what Eddie's good at. He, he's good at the, you know making huge, huge events, and uh, I think it's, it's only going to, in the long run, be a massive benefit to to us fighters. One hundred percent. Well, the stuff that he put out for Warrington Lara this week was like movie mm. level. Like I got like you talked about goosebumps earlier. I got goosebumps yeah, watching yeah. that. I was like, wow, it's un, un, unreal. Um, tell me, Chris, if you could see one fight that get made for this year, well, obviously outside of the big one, uh, Anthony Joshua and Fury, because that looks like it's never going to get made. Um, <laughs> which which fight? Which fight do you think uh, you would want to see? Maybe we'll do like a maybe a domestic fight and, a, and an international fight, or just an international. What what fight kind of springs to mind of a fight that you'd love to see? There's a there's a lot of good fights out there. Um, obviously, there was a bit of talk with Canelo and Betabayev or Baterbiev, however you pronounce his name. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I don't know, I feel it's like people just chucking names at Canelo just because they want to test him because he's too good for his own weight. So he has to go up and up and up. Um, yeah. And, he's and like, he's and like you soon, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, that's it. It'll be Lawrence will be fighting the next. Uh, yeah. or, or I will. I did call him out when I, when I met him. I said, we'll have a fight at Cruiserweight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say no, yeah. On, on your but, time, um, to go for it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he. he um, yeah, it's that. That's a fight, which is an exciting fight. But then also you've got like um, better buy up against Bivol, which is a, a, another great fight. Um, yeah, I mean, like, like I like light heavyweights. I've always have like for, throughout the years. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of exciting fights. There's a lot of exciting fights. Um, and then I mean, for me personally, being you know, selfish in my division. I'd love to see Lawrence fight Breedis. I think that is a really good fight. I've sparred them both over the years. Um, and Ooh. Breedis always puts on uh, a, a great I think, I think Lawrence has got that one, surely. I I, I, I believe so. Um, yeah. I think, look, people don't realise how good Lawrence is until they've got in there with him. And if you haven't sparred him before, you're going to struggle to make a game what? plan to beat him. What? Well, can we ask what's the size difference between Lawrence and Breeders? Because I've never seen them sort of together, but you've sparred both. Because Lawrence is a bit like the key factor in that fight will be Lawrence's size. Would he be able to impose that big size onto Breeders, or is Breeders also a very big man? Thing is, Breeders has got really good feet and he's good at slipping and punching his way in. So mm. he Lawrence, you know, likes to walk people onto shots. So yeah. that, that's that's what's exciting about that fight is. Yeah, uh, Breedis is going to want to get inside, and Lawrence is going to walk him onto a shot. So that that for me is um, is uh, it's a nice clash of styles. Hopefully, you know Lawrence can get his shots off, um, but he's so effective at being long. And then on the inside, now he's not just hugging; he's working away. He's doing yeah. little things. He's getting his position right, which is things people don't even realize. You know, he used to just keep it long, as soon as it was close, and hold a bit. And he's the first to admit that. So. Um, but yeah, that, I think that's a, a really interesting fight. But Breedis has got, he's got weighty hands, he's got punches well in combinations, puts his shots together well, and he's got really good feet. So it's uh, an intriguing fight, but one, like I said, I do believe Lawrence wins. Yeah, that's a, I think that's a brilliant shout. And it's one that not many people would say, but obviously because you're in the gym with Lawrence. Like, but that's, uh, for me, now you've said it, for me, top five fights, I think, that I would love to see in the next year or so, definitely. And I guess, speaking back to, to fight camp and, and the fights that's on live on the zone, um, what other fights should the audience be uh, sort of looking out for in fight camp? Um, I think the Boatsy Belotniks fight is is a really good fight. Um, Belot Belotniks people might 
look at his record and not think much of him. But you know, there are there are earlier on in his career, uh, a lot of his losses, and he's obviously come back, won the golden contract, and he's got a, a fighter in front of him now in Josh Baratzi, who's uh, he's a real talent, and I just don't think he's been mm. pushed or matched well enough yet to prove his talent. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, he, he needs a big fight and he knows how hard this fight will be. Um, I believe he, he's seen the style of Blot, um, of Blotniks and he's, he's very relentless, but perhaps he's very, you know, calculated, um, but also a very good front foot fighter. Um, yeah. And I think that fight for fight camp is, is, is really one to watch. I think it's a fantastic fight. Um, and it could be, you know, a real uh, coming out fight for for Josh. I think everyone's ears pricked up when uh, Josh signed with Virgil Hunter as well out in the States because Virgil Hunter is obviously like a sage of boxing. You know, he's worked with Andre Ward and Amir Khan. Um, and he's just got that kind of enig enigmatic personality. So it's kind of like this elite talent of Josh Boazzi. Everyone knows how talented he is. Maybe that might be the key going with this elite level trainer. It just kind of feels that way. And that's a good narrative to have, I think, around Josh Boazzi. Um, yeah, very yeah, absolutely. I mean, Andre Ward's one of my favorite fighters. The way Definitely. he could do, do everything, um, you know, the way he could work on the inside like a lot of my inside game has come from from watching Andre Ward and the things he does. I, I, I often just sit there watching his old fights. Like, people look at the Carl Frotch fight, and how would you beat Carl Frotch? You wouldn't want to bully him, but that's exactly what he did. Like, he, yeah, he pushed him back and, and he bullied him, and, and that was just uh. It just shows the, the sort of things he can do and he's box on the back foot, he can box on the front foot, he can box inside. Um, and obviously that's thanks to Virgil and Virgil was his coach for, you know, his whole life and for such yeah. so long they went unbeaten for however many years. Um, yeah. Amateur and pro. And it was, uh, uh, yeah, he's a fantastic coach, Virgil Hunter. And I really hope that relationship uh, gels really well and then we get to see the best of Josh Barazzi. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. And did you have any more questions? Yeah, yeah, let's bring it back to, to your fight on, on the zone, July, July 31st. Um, so just tell everyone how how you see the fight going and uh, how are you going to emerge victorious to get Tony McCarthy? I think um, I think it's going to, like I said, it's going to be an exciting fight. We're both, we can, we can both box. Um, I think the difference may be sort of the, the, I'm a bit bigger than him. I'm a lot bigger than him than I thought I was going to be. I thought he's going to be the same size as me, but when we we squared up at, at the presser, yeah. he's a bit shorter than me and he's he's slimmer than I thought he'd be as well. Uh, as in, like muscle wise, not that wide. So I think the strength will play a big factor, and my punch power. I think people massively underestimate um, that until they're in the ring with, with me and how relentless I can be. So that's that's what I'm going to be on fight now. I'm going to be relentless and. and in every every punch I throw it and non non stop until I've got him out there and if he manages the last twelve and, and so be it. But um for me I think I, I stop Tommy McCarthy in mid to late rounds. Mid to late rounds there. Good stuff. Well we wish you all the best in your, in your fight and then the latter end of your training camp. Definitely here the way and be watching and rooting for you. So uh, all the best mate. Thank you lads. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate your time. Cheers for coming on Chris. Yeah we appreciate it as well. Thank you, man. All the best, man. Thank you, mate. Nice one. Cheers, lads.